Hello friends and welcome back to another reaction video. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Nate and I do a lot of reaction videos typically based on the differences between the United States and other places in the world. And if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. In today's video, it has something to do with what I've been talking about in my last few videos. If you haven't seen my unemployment vlog series, I will link it down below. Um, but I do have to uh, state a disclaimer here. This isn't the first time I've seen this video. This will be the second time I'm doing this. The first time I managed to go through the whole thing and not record any sound from the video. So this is not a blind reaction. I have seen this. However, it does make some good points that I'd like to point out. And being that it's dealing with kind of what I'm going through right now, uh, it makes sense. So the title of this one is what is considered a good salary in Germany. Now, if you didn't know, I was just unemployed. Uh, I got laid off. Hopefully I found another job quite quickly. Uh, but salary does play a big part in everybody's life. We do need enough money to be able to survive and do the things that we want to do. What's the difference between the salary in the United States and in Germany? We're about to find out. Well, at least a good salary typically in Germany. So enough blabbering. Let's just get into the video. If you ask 10 different people what a good salary in Germany is, you will most likely get 10 different answers. That's because this is a very subjective question and the answer highly depends on your lifestyle, age and where do you live. In this video we will do our very best to try to answer the question how much money do you actually need in your bank account or as a salary to be able to live in Germany. Hey, my name is Jen and I'm from Guatemala. And mine is Yvonne and I'm German. And together we're from Simple Germany, where we create English content to help internationals settle into life in Germany more smoothly. <laughs> Additional to this YouTube channel, we also run our website simplegermany.com, where we have written in-depth guides on topics that we don't cover on YouTube and that will also help you out settling in Germany. So check them out. In 2020, the gross annual salary, gross, I must emphasize, was 47,700 euros a year. On average. On average, very good which roughly estimates to 3,975 euros a month. Still gross. Still on average. <laughs> <laughs> yes. To put that in perspective, because an average, you know, it's, it doesn't really say that much, but one third of people working in Germany earn above that average and two thirds earn below that average. A very important concept that you need to learn from the get-go is gross annual salary. So gross refers to the amount of money that you will earn before any social contributions are taken away or taxes from your salary. Right. Can you explain that a little bit more? Yeah, of course. I mean, it is uh, very individual, but just as a rough example, from your gross salary, so whatever you negotiate and that's on your you know, contract and on your paycheck, you will have detracted your wage tax or your income tax. Uh, as well as four different social contributions. And that is your health insurance, that is uh, care insurance, that is pension insurance and unemployment insurance. That money will never see your bank account. And it is, you know, depending on how much you earn, but round about 40% that you can distract. Yes, and that is very important to highlight that you will never see this money. Okay, I'd like to point out the 40% here because a lot of people make the argument that Germany has much higher taxes than the United States. And that's just not entirely true. Uh, I'm in the, I might be close to that 40% just based on what I made. It does depend on how much you make. So um, <clears throat> if you're in a lower tax bracket, it's not going to be 40%. It's just like the United States where there are different um, tax brackets depending on how much you make and the more you make the more taxes you pay and actually when you get your first pay slip you would see the amount that you got gross for the month minus a lot of these subtractions and then at the very bottom you will see actually how much net you will receive we have a whole video explaining the pay slip and how the contributions work which you can check out up there in order to get your own idea of how much you have left from your gross salary once you have a salary or get an offer you can actually use this calculator that we linked below in the description from Arbeit Now. it is in english and it calculates gross 
to net salary depending on your individual circumstance. The number we have mentioned is an average for all of Germany, which is a little bit unfair because <coughs> there are very expensive cities and very like inexpensive cities, one might say. So your salary really depends on a lot of different factors. Some of the most important ones are actually location, work experience or years of experience, education, size of the company, and unfortunately also gender. This is a good point as well. Um, not every salary is created equal, depending on where you live. Here in the United States as well, if I lived in New York City, my dollar wouldn't go quite as far as it does here. And my dollar here doesn't go quite as far as maybe some rural area that's a little bit less cost of living. Unfortunately, even though we are in the year 2024, 21st century, we still have this gender pay gap um, that, that is unfortunate to say the least. So all of these do factor in. Uh, I'm, they do a pretty good job of just kind of taking average um, salaries. So obviously take all of this with a grain of salt because depending on what you do, where you are and your lifestyle, uh, will depend on how much, you know, you need to make. That is true, yes. So to give you an even better understanding, let's compare some of the most uh, favorite cities for internationals in Germany and go by average salary based on location in Germany. These numbers are from the uh, website Gehaltsvergleich.com and we start with Munich. So in Munich, the average gross salary is 46,752 euros per year. In Dusseldorf, it's 45,468 euros per year. In Stuttgart, it is 47,580 euros per year. In Hamburg, 41,976 euros per year. In Frankfurt, 47,856 euros. And Berlin, it's actually 37,800 euros per year gross again, right? So that's based on location, based on a full-time 40-hour work week. Now, It's interesting. Munich being one of the most expensive cities in Germany to live is less average salary than some of these other places and Frankfurt being the highest uh, I believe they mentioned this but I believe it has something to do with them being the banking center of Germany basically Berlin is quite low uh, but I believe there are a lot of startups in Berlin uh, like tech startups and that sort of thing so that might be a con uh, contributor to why their average salary is a little less you're going to make a little less money at these startups compared to um, salaries from a well-established um, larger company. Based on these numbers, you see certain nuances. <laughs> Munich is notoriously known for being the most expensive city to live in in Germany. However, it does not pay the highest salary on average, hmm. right? It is close to the top range, but Stuttgart and Frankfurt pay more. Stuttgart being also in the top three of the most expensive cities and Frankfurt as well. And it's the banking capital. So I think that has a high influence. But you see hmm. this big gap between all of the cities mentioned and Berlin. Yes. There's like a 10,000 euro gap gross per year in salary. Hmm. And that is because Berlin per se, in terms of like supermarkets, food, dining out, it is not very expensive. However, rent in Berlin has skyrocketed in recent years. And I mean, not to the level of Munich, but still is more expensive. So that's why in Berlin, you really also need to pay attention to your salary. If you're liking this video, please make sure to consider hitting that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then make sure to hit that red button down there at the bottom. That would really help this channel out. And if you want to go an additional extra mile, you can always buy us at coffee at simplegermany.com slash coffee. This is a virtual coffee that is a small donation to help us continue with Simple Germany. Thanks for your support. Now that we touched the subject of location and how that affects the average salary, now let's talk about like the work or the profession itself. As we mentioned in another video on how to get a job in Germany without speaking German, <laughs> we highlight that if you are in the tech or IT industry, your chances of getting an English speaking job is a lot higher than in a non-tech industry. That's why for this specific uh, portion of the video, we will talk about tech related jobs. Or at least digital departments, right? It doesn't yes. have to be a tech company per se, but True. the digital department in a company. That is a very good point. So we will mention three of the most popular, let's say, digital um, jobs. 
job titles. Job titles, yeah. <laughs> Let's start with the project manager. Depending on your experience, for a project manager, you could earn on average between 52,000 and 67,000 euros gross a year. And the depending on experience here ranges if you have less than three experience uh, three years experience versus if you have more than nine year experience so that really is a big difference also in terms of yeah work knowledge now let's go this one really caught my attention because project manager if you're a project manager professional um, here in the united states a lot of those jobs typically are in the health care field um, not all of them, there's tech, there's construction, there's, you know, um, that sort of thing, but a lot of them are health related. But I went through a project management uh, professional course and a lot of the starting salaries here are six figures. You're, you're reaching that $100,000 a year mark. That's straight off the bat. If you have that project management professional three letters PMP after your name, you're certified and you have to certify certify regularly, um, it's a lot higher. That 52,000 euro a year for less than three years is quite low to me. And even with nine plus years, you're still um, you know, $33,000 away from that six figure mark. So that one really caught my attention. Go to like a software engineer role. So as a software engineer, if you have less than three years experience, you would you could earn or the average is around 54,000 euros. Whereas if you are like a senior, very experienced software engineer with more than nine years experience, that number on average goes up to 70,000. Now, as a UX designer, as a very a uh, fresh UX designer, you can earn on average as little as 42,000 euros and as much as 54,000 euros on average if you have a lot more years of experience. Again, please take these numbers as a grain of salt because this is an average for the whole country. And as we have mentioned, that is very, very different in every single city. But just to give you an estimation of how much people are earning in these professions. Now we also mentioned that gender plays a role in salary and unfortunately Germany just like in many other countries in the world also suffers from the gender gap pay. So on average men earn 49,752 euros gross a year versus women 42,936 euros a year. I think that difference is quite high. That is quite high especially because these numbers are based on same professions right? Similar yes. professions are not just taken out of the blue. Yes so not all hope is lost. There are a lot of initiatives initiatives in Germany and within Europe to reduce the gender pay gap. And one of these initiatives is a company called 50 in Tech. And 50 in Tech, the name comes because they want 50% of the workforce to be women and to be paid equally as men. 50 in Tech also has a job board. And in that job board, they promote jobs from companies that have committed to 50 in Tech that they're open to more diversity and to have equal pay between genders. So that is pretty cool. If you're looking for a job that also, you know, from companies that thrive with these values, make sure to check 50 in Tech out. Now, we also mentioned that the size of the company matters in terms of salary, and that is usually a fact. I mean, there are always exceptions to the rules, right? right? And technically, what that means is that the bigger the company, meaning like the more employees and the more like um, a corporate style it is, <laughs> the higher your salary may be, versus the smaller the company is, the more like, let's say, startup-y, uh, trendy, and, and, and less bureaucratic in that sense, the lower the salary is. Again, there are exceptions, but just keep that in mind as well. Yes, also the bigger the company, sometimes the bigger the benefits you might right, get. Yeah. For example, I worked in a, in a very big uh, telecommunications company, and there the benefits were really good. Yeah, like even. you got Christmas money, like a bonus, yeah, or like a summer bonus. bonus like, yeah. Yeah. So it was really, really good, and other perks as well that we're not going to go into in this video, right? <laughs> We have still yet to answer the question, but how much is a good salary in Germany? And that's because it's not such a straightforward answer, but we're getting there. So please bear, bear a little bit longer in this video because we need to give you a little bit more context. So in 2021, Stepstone, which is a very big job board also, or like where they promote jobs in Germany, did a study where they asked Germans, how happy are you with your salary? Exactly. And that took like 250,000 salary data points. So it's quite extensive. Yes. And surprisingly enough, 43% of the people that answered said they were super happy when they had a salary above 64,000 euros a year. Which is quite a lot higher than the average salary in Germany. Yeah, which is crazy, right? And 41% answered that they were not happy when they received a salary equal to or lower than 49,000 euros Which a is year. still above the average salary in Germany. This, I think, can, can hold true in many places. Um, you know, if you, 
again, it depends on your lifestyle. I think that really plays a huge factor in it as well. If you're the type that likes to go out all the time and, and entertainment and dining and, and that sort of thing, you know, if, if you're not making above $64,000, you may not be able to afford all of those luxuries, so you're not going to be quite as happy. Whereas if you're somebody who doesn't do those things and likes to stay in and maybe go out once in a while and doesn't spend money on a lot of things, maybe 49000 is enough for them to be happy. So, um, you know, this whole thing is averages um, and a lot of factors going to play with all these numbers here in the United States as well. So this can lead to a conclusion that if you, let's say, earn 50 and above thousand euros gross in Germany, you could be on the stepping stone way to becoming happy or being happy. <laughs> or being happy with your salary. Again, how much money you need to live happily and comfortably in a country really depends on you and what kind of lifestyle you want. Exactly, yes. When I first moved to Germany, I earned way below average. My first job in Germany, and mind you, I was already like mid-20s with four years of work experience abroad, was way below average as well. Yes, however, I remember that time I was very happy with my salary because for me, money is not everything. And for me, one of the biggest reasons why I moved to Germany was to increase my quality of life. So even though I had less money, let's call it, sorry, we're in Germany, less money, I had a lot other perks that, for example, in Guatemala, I didn't have. We have a whole video of like 10 things I love about living in Germany, which you can check out there to know a little bit more of what I'm talking about. And that for me was a big game changer. And obviously through time, more work experience, I also change roles between uh, customer service and being a software engineer that totally increased my salary range as well. Right. But also me earning below less salary. I had my own apartment. I traveled. I mean, obviously, I didn't do luxury travel. But again, I traveled. I you know, got to see places. I did go out. Um, again, I yeah. didn't go out every week in dining, but I had my beers by the Rhine. So it depends on your lifestyle. But more importantly, also depends whether you're moving alone or with family, right? If you have a partner to support, children to support, hmm. that, of course, you should take into consideration and maybe then obviously strive for a salary above uh, average. Yes, I 100% agree. And also that also leads to question, how about purchasing power? Because like we mentioned, money is not everything in a country. You kind of need to know how much can you buy with that money. We have a very kind of geeky explanation in our guide, which we're not going to go to in this video because that would be way too much for this video, which you can check in simplegermany.com. We will link it in the description below. At the end of the day, the decision needs to be, as we already mentioned, yours. As long as you know what the average salary and where you stand in that average salary in relation to the rest of the country. I think from there you can take it a little bit further and then analyze your lifestyle, go into the Arbeit Now calculator, um, look check the cost of living, living in the area that you are going to work. Yeah, exactly. And all these things. And we have another video about the pure cost of living in Germany, which might help you also understand is the salary that I'm getting at the end of the day net? Will it be enough for me, myself and my family or whoever else you're moving in with? So make sure to check it out, which is coming up next. Until next time. Cheers. Okay, so I think they made a lot of good points there. It was very broad, a very wide angle view on the subject. You could go really far into this and, uh, you know, have numbers coming out your ears with this. But I think at the end of the day, a good salary is subjective, right? It depends on the person. It depends on who you are, what you like to do where you live, um, what your goals are, you know, financially, that's a lot of what comes into play as well. So you can't have, oh, I need to make X amount of dollars across the board for everybody and those people would be happy. It just isn't the case. Um, I think for me, you know, some of these average salaries for the positions like the UX designer, the software engineer, you know, the program manager, I make or made almost the top of some of those, well, ab well above the UX designer and with nine plus years of experience. So that was kind of shocking that just the position I had made more than some of these other tech positions with, you know, twice as much experience. So it's going to be interesting when we move over there and, you know, my wife is a teacher. We already, you know, kind of expect know what to expect uh, with that. But for me, depending on what I'm doing here and if I can transfer over to Germany or get a, a job with a, a related company over there or a related field, 
you know, it's going to be interesting to see the difference. But I think what it really comes down to as well, and like they said, the next video coming up, and I might, you know, bookmark that one to react to as well. Uh, but the cost of living, um, you know, depending on where you live and how much things cost is going to play a big part in your salary. And for us, where we plan on moving is Rhineland Falls, uh, not the most expensive place in Germany to live. And I have this argument a lot, well, discussion, I guess, with people that they, they just assume that Germany is just this extraordinarily expensive place to live where everything's more expensive and you pay more taxes and it's, it's just not worth it. And that's absolutely not true. Uh, for you that live there, you know that. And for me, who's visited many times and has lived over there, I know that not to be true as well. Yes, some things are quite a bit more expensive. Take fuel, for example. Oh my goodness. To fill up your car with gas is going to be, you know, three or four times as much as it is here. However, there are things to compensate for that. For one, I think European vehicles are more economical. I just think that they're built better. They have better emissions. They're, they get better gas mileage. That might be, not be entirely true, but I think it is. Um, without doing all the research on it, I know that we rented a car. It was a Land Rover and, you know, something that you would expect not to get excellent gas mileage, but we could go over 500 kilometers to a tank of gas. And for me, that was huge. We drove all the way to Switzerland on one tank of gas. Uh, I think I filled it up in two weeks. I think I filled it up three times and I was driving everywhere. So, you know, fuel is going to be more expensive, but then groceries, I, a lot of groceries are a lot less expensive than here in the United States. And I know there's plenty of channels and videos out there on the comparison between grocery shopping in Germany and grocery shopping in the United States, depending on where they live in the United States. Um, so I think it balances out. And the tax brackets, people want to scare you into thinking that they're, they pay these enormous tax rates. And yeah, the tax rates are high. They're high here as well. And the more you make, the more you pay. So you just have to take that into consideration when you're factoring your salary, your net income, your gross income, and then what you want to do with your money. So overall, great video. Let me know down in the comments uh, what you thought. Uh, I don't want to know anybody's salary, but are you happy with your salary? And kind of where are you in the you know, ballpark? Are you upper um, salary level, lower salary level? And you know, where, where do you live um, to get that salary? I'd like to know, you know to, to real world um, examples, not just a, an average you know, based video. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. And until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye.